Hello everyone. So let's continue our emergency medicine drug series. Knowing about each drug while working in an emergency department, when what is its indication, its adverse effect, and what is its mechanism of action is very important. So today we shall be talking about peridoxin. So let's start. Uh, to peridine aldoxan methyl chloride, also known as peridoxin, it belongs to the class oxymes. Uh, common oxime based uh, reactivators or nerve antidotes include peridoxime, obidoxime, H16, trimedoxime, and methoxamine. Among this, peridoxime is a DA approved drug. So, what are its indications? It is used as an antidote for nerve agent poisoning, organophosphorus based antidote sites and overdose of anticholinesterase drugs such as neostigmine and pyridostigmine. So let's see the mechanism of action. Acetylcholinesterase enzyme is basically responsible for the hydrolysis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, various nicotinic and the muscarinic sites of the body and hence does not let it to accumulate. This enzyme uh, has a serine site and an anionic site. The serine site lies within the enzyme's active site and is attached by the and is attacked by the organophosphorus compound that leads to phosphorylation of the serine site and the formation of the strong covalent bond inactivating the active site of the enzyme. Unlike the carbamates, uh, this interaction is irreversible. How does Peridoxime act in this case. Peridoxime, it is acetylcholinesterase uh, enzyme reactivator. It works by attaching to the anionic side of the enzyme. At this side, peridoxime is this very close to the organophosphorus. The peridoxime molecule has a higher affinity to get uh, to become phosphorylated with organophosphorus than the serine side of the enzyme, uh, leading to the peridoxime sacrificing itself by getting phosphorylated uh, instead of the enzyme. The OP compound detaches from the enzyme to do this, leading to two things. First is there is formation of the organophosphorus in the palm complex which hydrolyzes quickly. Second is uh, it uh, restores the active site of the acetylcholinesterase enzyme making it available for action once again. Coming to do dosing, uh, the dose is 30 mg per kg initially over 30 minutes followed by an infusion of 8 mg per kg per hour. This is given until uh, all the nicotinic symptoms of the OP poisoning resolves or for at least 48 hours in case of significant exposure or until atropine is no longer used. Instead of infusion, even bolus doses are used in which initial bolus dose that is 1 to 2 gram is given over 30 minutes followed by which the dose is repeated after 1 hour if nicotinic symptoms still persist and thereafter uh, 2 gram is given every 4 to 6 hourly. But the continuous infusion dose is found to be more advantageous than the bolus dose. The infusion dose is found to be more effective and it has found to reduce mortal mortality and morbidity in moderate to severe cases. Next timing, timing of administration. Uh, basically, it is ineffective after 24 to 48 hours of exposure uh, due to the phenomena of aging. Aging refers to dealkylation of the phosphorylated enzyme leading to electron shuffling in a way that strengthens the covalent bond between the organophosphorus and the acetylcholine enzyme to a point that even peridoxime is unable to reactivate the enzyme further. Even delayed administration of Peridoxime may uh, is found to be beneficial due to the prolonged absorption of the compound or high lipid solubility. Sometimes this is the metabolite of the OP poisoning that is uh, toxic. In that case, uh, delayed administration may be beneficial. Plasma levels fall below the therapeutic level in less than 1.5 hours after the bolus dose. Hence, infusion was considered superior over the bolus dose to maintain a plasma level. Secretion is via urine and feces. Co-administration with atropin was found to have better absorption. Peridoxime was detected in the plasma earlier and in higher concentrations when given along with the atropin. And on the other hand, even atropinization was found to occur earlier when given in combination with uh, peridoxime. This synergy is a rationale behind including this drug together in the auto-injector. Because of its positive charge, peridoxime does not cross the blood-brain barrier and hence it is of limited effectiveness against the central effect. Next, coming to the adverse effect, uh, the loading dose of the oxime should be given slowly uh, because the rapid infusion can cause tachycardia, diastolic hypertension, vomiting and aspiration. Peridoxime chloride is uh, 1.53 times more potent than peridoxime iodide. In that case, high dose regimen that the 650 mg per hour of the iodide is equivalent to 8 mg per kg per hour infusion of chloride. Uh, if uh, peridoxime iodide is used instead of peridoxime chloride, large doses, doses require careful attention. It is also found to cause blurred vision, diplopia, dizziness, impaired accommodation and headache. But these adverse effects are difficult to discern in patients with OP poisoning as similar symptoms occur in patients not treated with peridoxime as well. Coming to contraindication, usage with carbamates, especially carbaryl, showed poor outcomes, hence it is contraindicated. 
contraindicated if a patient had a severe hypersensitivity reaction and administering pralidoxam in patient with myasthenia gravis may precipitate myasthenia crisis and hence must be carefully used. Hope this will be useful for your preparation.